Welcome to the Tales from the Glass Guarded World. I am Gaston, your host, while Astaire is off hunting some god's forsaken animal. Today's adventure features players old and new, with Ben playing Seobald, a tabaxi cat burglar, and the pun master himself, Brian, making a triumphant return as Gordak the Grim, a half orc barbarian, rogue, and local thug within the city of Rongsrak. And of course, Josh, occupying the mind of Gaston, a halfling rogue and bard. As you are most definitely aware, I was the richest, most powerful, most successful person in Arrival. But after discovering the world is much, much larger than the limits of our jar, I must reassess what it means to be accomplished and also reevaluate my life's purpose. And you see, life, it, uh, it has a finish line. A race that I am reminded of each year as the inexorable conquest of age marches across my body. Whatever happens in the next stage of my life, I need to lengthen the course of this race so that I can find some meaning with it. And so it is time to relieve an ASMR, which is uh, some sort of uh, angel person, of their magical wares for reasons that have absolutely nothing to do with the mathematical formulas related to people's ages. But if the tales from the glass guarded world has taught us anything, it's that while magical items always bring surprises, so do the people that try to steal them. Gaston, you've walked back to the Mellow Angel and started casing the place. It has been a long, boring afternoon as no one else has entered or left the building. There is no rear entrance, there are no windows, just a simple wooden door at the front. The building itself, as I've described before, is a somewhat rickety looking wooden structure jammed between two old stone buildings, dwarven buildings, with colorful tarp roofs. In fact, The Mellow Angel probably depends on its stone neighbors for support. The wooden roof slopes up from the front to reach a peak in the middle and then slopes back down again toward the back. It slopes more gently toward the back and you remember, Gaston, from your previous visit inside that the back half of the shop is on a wooden platform raised a couple feet off of the stone floor. And that stone floor is really just the cobblestone street, which is probably why part of it was covered up with wood. Basically, this is a shack built on the street between two buildings. It's a big shack, but it's not an elegant structure. You've noticed a big, rough-looking half-orc hanging around the area. He's also noticed you, though he's trying not to look conspicuous or interested. He might be watching the magic shop, or he might be watching something else. He is carrying an enormous maul strapped across his back. It's dark now. Traffic in this part of town has trickled down to nothing. The half-orc looks like he's sleeping on his feet, leaning on the front wall of the magic shop, just behind a potted shrub. That bright thing the locals call Ithil, the moon, appears in the sky, now looking like the tip of a fingernail, casting dim light, and those little twinkling star things are also visible. Two blocks to the north, you can see a group of drunken sailors are stumbling back toward their ship at the docks to the east. What would you like to do? Let me pull up for you a map. Can everybody see this? Yes. Now we can. Yeah. So you can see here's Gaston around the corner. And you can see there's this big half orc over near the uh, entrance of this building, leaning on the building behind a shrub. And there's the welcome mat. Ben, your character is currently not visible. Yep. By choice. Yep. And this is the magic shop up at the north here. If I zoom out... You can see that there are other buildings around here that I have not detailed the insides of because they don't matter. You can see they have stone walls, and you can see that this building up here has wooden walls. Well, wooden front and back walls. The side walls are stone. Also, one other thing, this whole map is rotated 90 degrees to the right because I'm stupid. Uh, I should have uh, made it north to south the way it ought to be. North is actually to the right. South is to the left. Right. West is up and east is down. Sorry. It's okay doesn't really matter. I think this makes more sense. Uh, It's easier for me to visualize what's going on this way. I I agree. That's why I did it this way. But it is confusing that north is not up on this map. North is to the right. Yeah. I mean, all my spells are based on cardinal directions. So yeah, it's going to cause problems. Yeah, I'm sorry. You'll be unable to target anything. Well, I guess you'll you'll still have to target them. It's just that you're going to tell me I'm going to target that monster to the north. And then I'm going to say, there's no monster to the north. So your spell just does nothing. (laughs) 
good. So this is just part of the challenge. All right, we yeah, got that's it. right. We can do it. You must rotate everything in your mind. I'm gonna remember because welcome is right there with a W, the west. and that's west. And yes. that's how I'm gonna handle this. Nice. Never eat shredded welcome. Okay, that was the that was the mnemonic device. Is the half orc a player that is currently on the Zoom call? And it would be really rude of me just to completely bypass someone. It is a player, but you should treat that character as Gaston would actually treat them. Okay. Right now they're a problem. There are no uh, windows in this building. It's just no wood. What about mm-hmm. the back side of it? Is that um? You know the back side doesn't have any doors either. Okay. Nor skylights. All right. I need this person to get out of here. So, what what's going on with this this half work? Are they arms crossed, leaning against the building, or what? Yeah, yeah. I think that's a fair description. Okay. Did you say they look like they're uh, sleeping, standing up? Yes. Hmm. You're pretty sure they're not guarding the place. Okay. Oh, well, that's that's helpful. All right, Gaston will post up right next to them. Oh, yeah? All right, so Gaston oh, yeah. Gaston casually strolls over here and, I don't know, what, a five-foot gap between you? Sure, yeah, he follows that mouse cursor like he's a cat. Okay. <laughs> and posts up next to the uh, half-orc standing there. All right, is it, is, what, about the, what about the crowds? Is it just empty? It's just yeah, there's pretty much a, just an occasional person walking by. The streets are pretty empty and dark. This area of town, you may remember, is mostly warehouses. If you want to know what's next door. Yeah, definitely. If you made a note about it, we want to know. Yeah, the building to the right is a laundry, currently closed. The building to the left is a warehouse. And uh, yeah, the other buildings are warehouses. And one of them is actually a, uh, a stonemason's shop. And it's shut down. I mean, it's closed. It's evening. Okay. All right, Gaston will attempt to talk to this person, but he's terrified because it looks like Mama Sass. All right, so, uh, uh, Gordak, this uh, halfling that you've been sort of keeping an eye on, uh, strolls up and leans on the wall, looking very casual next to you. What are you doing? Are you uh, maintaining your chill, relaxed, dispassionate, uninterested, sleepy pose? Or are you... Going to do something else when he walks up. Gordak opens uh, one eye and looks over at the halfling and goes, What are you doing? But I was uh, wondering the same thing about you. It's such a wonderful evening. Why are you here and next to this shack? Hmm. And then uh, Gordak says, uh, I'm not totally sure how Thieves Can't works because it sounds like they're they're saying one thing, but they're, they have a secret message. Yeah, so just say what your actual message is yeah. in, in your Thieves Can't. I've noticed you around here. Are you uh, casing the joint? So, yeah, this this half-orc talks to you in Thieves' Cant, which somehow you can understand, despite the languages being separated uh, by a couple thousand years inside and outside World 83, somehow you can understand this Thieves' Cant from this uh, half-orc. That's fine. Don't point that out. <laughs> can I hear anything? Am I am I in range to be able to hear these this conversation? Or? Let's see. How far are you? They're speaking in pretty low voices, but if you want to make a perception check, you could you could see if you could hear them. Uh, I could do that. That would involve rolling something. It would. You would have to get a twenty sided die and roll <laughs> that, and then add your perception <laughs> bonus. Yeah, I'm just trying to find my D and D Beyond. Uh, okay. Perception. Oh, cool. I got an eight. All right. You cannot hear what they're saying. They're not trying to be stealthy, but you're far enough. I mean, they're they're not speaking loudly, but uh, you're far enough away that you can only catch snatches of, of what they're saying. Got it. You can tell from their body language, probably. In fact, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you one more chance. Make a uh, make an insight check. That's a 13. Yeah, you can tell they're being cautious with each other. Okay. These two are not friends who have who are just having a casual, friendly conversation. There's some tension here. All right, so anyways, back to Gordak and Gaston. Yeah, we, we met up on the, the Thieves Meetup app. So this is like the first. We swiped left, or I don't I don't know which way is the right way to swipe. Uh, Gaston. We, we matched on Burglar with just an R. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Gaston, I, I want to actually talk in Thieves' Camp. How do I do it? He'll be like, 
the the moon is shining so bright on this building, you know. It's a, it has a sparkly. It it has a good fate, I think. <laughs> a fate that should come upon it on this night. What? <laughs> <laughs> you understand that to mean? I'm going to rob this place tonight. <laughs> hmm. What uh, are you looking for? Anything specific? I'm just trying to get one potion, and the owner of this establishment is a total ripoff, and gave me a price, an outrageous price, so I am just going to take it. I, I like your style, kid. Uh, uh, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I got uh, pretty similar plans, so uh, what do you say you and me, we uh, combine forces, eh? That is fine with me. I only want one thing in this building, and uh, make sure to get your fingerprints all over everywhere. That would be good. Yeah, ditto short stuff. <laughs> all right. So what's your plan, then? Gaston's going to open this door. It's going to go right in. Okay. So Gaston heads over to the door. Before we go inside, uh, are there, like, pebbles and stuff on the ground? Yeah, so this is a cobblestone street. Uh-huh. And sure, you can get pebbles off the ground. I yep. want to grab a handful of pebbles and put them in uh, put them in a pocket. Okay, great idea. You grab some pebbles, you put them in a pocket. I assume you go over toward the door as well. Mm-hmm. Um, now, Gaston, and, and for that matter, Gordak, you both know that this door has a bell on it that chimes when the door opens. And you're not aware of any other traps of any kind, but uh, it's it's it is a rickety building that... Seems poorly maintained. If you had to guess, you would guess it's not well defended, but it's hard to be sure. Can I uh, uh, check and see if I think that bell is Yeah, magic make an investigation or, or an arcana check. They're both plus one. There's a 17. You're pretty sure it's just a bell on a string. Uh, is the bell on the inside or the outside? It is on the inside. Okay. Uh, I And thieves can't say, uh, open the door real slow. But of course. All right, so now I'm going to skip over to Theobald. Theobald, you are around the corner watching these two. They seem to have come to some kind of agreement, and they both walk up to the door. Actually, the doors. There's a pair of double doors. They walk up to the doors, and they are now apparently trying to get in without setting off the bell. Yeah, so I think I would like to approach at this point. Okay. And just kind of sidle up behind them. All right, are you doing this stealthily or openly? Uh, openly. Openly. So the two of you, as you're standing at the door, inspecting it, uh, thinking about how you're going to push this door open slowly, you hear some footsteps behind you, someone not trying to be stealthy, and you turn to see a cat person walks up. Ben, do you want to describe your cat person? Absolutely. Yeah, you see this cat person walking towards you. Um, The cat is probably a bit taller than an average human, quite wiry. Uh, They've got dull orange fur uh, with some darker stripes across the side, top and back of their head. Um, They're dressed in some comfortable looking, um, like a dark blue tunic with some black pants. Uh, Noticeably no shoes. Um, The feet are long paws with some sharp looking claws. Uh, They've got a rapier slung from a belt, and they've got a short bow attached to a pack on their back. And of course, being a cat, there's a tail. And as they approach, uh, they just, as I say, kind of sidle up. And also in Thieves can say, so, what's the plan? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Looks like our uh, party just grew by one. Hold on one second. Yeah, I see you're uh, interested in this place, and I am also interested in this place. I've been uh, looking at it for uh, a few weeks now, and given that we might have um, aligned interests, perhaps we should all try and make this work together? The more the merrier, I say. Should I be making insight checks, or should I just believe everybody? It's up to you. Oh, man, rolling is fun. But with PCs role-playing with each other, I I think you should, at your first default, your default position should be to try to figure out how you feel about what they say from what they've said and how they say it. Oh, they're talking these can't. This is good news. Yeah, right. They're giving you all the right signals to suggest that 
there's some kind of heist here that you could all work together on. You got an issue with this this person, short stuff? No, I don't think I have ever seen a cat person before, but I can get over it pretty quickly. Uh, what what is everyone's name? I am Pierre. Pierre. Uh, uh, you can call me. Well, in this place, you can call me Tabs. <clears throat> Tabs. Tabs. Okay. And I'm I'm Gordak the Grim, but uh, you can call me Gordy. Gordy. Got it. I've uh, seen you around, Gordak. Oh, sorry, Gordy. Yeah. Have you, have you been inside? Do you, do you know what you're after? Oh, I, yeah, I definitely know what I'm after. Do you know what you're after? Um, I'm interested in one or two different pieces. So hopefully we can work out the spoils uh, at some point and hopefully they don't conflict. Hmm. Most of the stuff in there looks like it's junk, but uh, there's bound to be one or two valuable items in there. Yeah, I think potentially more towards the back. I uh, I haven't been able to get back there to, to take a good look. Have you? Mm-mm. No, sir. I just know they have plenty of socks. <laughs> socks. <laughs> there are a lot of socks. It's true. I don't wear many socks. Yeah, I gathered <laughs> They keep getting holes in them. <laughs> <laughs> I like the effort. <laughs> so what's the plan? You're back to the door here, opening it stealthily. Who's going to try to open this door stealthily? Hey, uh, uh, Tabs, this, this door, you know, it's got a bell on it. Do you think you could open this door real smooth and rip that bell off without it ringing? I could certainly try. If you want to learn more about the bell, you can make an investigation check. Yeah, let us, sure, let us all do, do this. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I love this I, this image of three people just standing in front of the door, all staring intently at the string going to the bell, all going, hmm, hmm. <laughs> I imagine we could open the door a little bit and then glide a dagger up there and snip the wire, but I don't know. Right. The bell if you wanted to, well, yeah, go ahead and make an investigation check. What'd you guys get on your investigation checks? 11. Uh, I got a 19. Also a 19. The 11, you're, you're pretty sure there must be a mechanical way to silence this, uh, Gaston, or should I say Pierre, but Tabs and Gordy, you think you're, you're pretty sure that, like you said, you could open the door just a little bit, access the string that attaches to the bell and snip it with your tools. So if someone wanted to make a tool use check, you could try that to disable the bell. A tool use check is something that I have not heard of. So uh, thieves tools, if you have thieves uh-huh. tools, you're proficient with them. Uh-huh. And if you're proficient, it means you add your dexterity and your proficiency bonus. If you've got expertise in tools, then you double your proficiency bonus and then add your dexterity. Hmm. Does anyone know if their characters are... Proficient or experts with tools? Uh, definitely proficient. D&D mm-hmm. Beyond is not good at reporting that tool information. Yeah, it's not. So that's separate from like a sleight of hand check. It wouldn't be a sleight of hand check to use. No, it's a tool tools, use it's, uh, check. A uh, sleight mm-hmm. of hand would be if you're just using your hands to do something quick. But if you're proficient, then you get to add your proficiency bonus and your uh, dexterity bonus. Uh, yeah, I could do that. All right. If you want to give it a try. It doesn't look like it'd be too difficult. That's good. I got a 28. Oh, for sure. Yeah, without a single sound, without the bell even being slightly jostled, the cable is snipped and the door can be safely opened quietly. Ordag makes a uh, chef's kiss gesture and goes, (laughs) I like this guy. All right, so you open the door. And that means I will pull back a little and let you see the front area of the room. So this entire area is one room, except I will give you a brief glimpse. Way back here, there's a room at the back that is separate from the main room that is the entire store. The door opens, creaking quietly, but not making much noise because you silenced the bell. This is mostly one large room with a small room blocked off on the far left corner. The floor here by the entrance is simply the cobblestone street enclosed within the wooden walls. About 45 feet away, a wooden structure has been built on top of the cobblestones, raising the back of the store three feet above the ground. There are stairs on the far right and far left. 
The ceiling is 10 feet high at the door, rising to 20 feet in the middle of the room, then sloping back down toward the back of the building. Tables are lined up neatly to your right and left and covered with miscellaneous items. There is a pile of books on the left just before the rear platform and several lecterns with books on them. To the far left and right are modest bookshelves. The rear wooden platform also has several tables topped with various items, but these tables are scattered around in a disorganized manner. Torches line the walls, but the middle of the room has no direct lighting and is darker. The proprietor's desk sits 20 feet in front of you, flanked by potted plants. There are some coins on the desk, as well as a sack that probably contains more coins, a lantern, not currently lit, despite what you see on the map there, and an inkwell with a quill in it. A green carpet in front of the desk really ties the room together. <laughs> Just what he needed. <laughs> I like that additional description. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right, so Gaston can't see in here. Is it dark in here? It's dark near the middle of the room, but well lit uh, at the, well, torch lit near the edges. So it's a little harder to see in the middle. You, you're not going to stumble over anything. It's just that if there's anything scattered on the floor or if there's someone hidden about to sneak out and kill you, they might be able to hide somewhere in the middle of the room. Um, but it's it's not well lit, but it's not complete darkness. I'm not going to hide anything or put fog of war on the map. Uh, it's just not worth the trouble. I am going to move all of you inside the room here, assuming you all choose to go in. I don't know. I, I, I won't presume to put you on the mat. I don't know. Uh, or on the no. on the carpet. I don't want to assume that you're going to step anywhere in particular. Tell you what. Uh, I don't want to step on that. It's tying the room together. Right. <laughs> Before we go inside, let's make a bit of a plan. Tell you guys what, uh, since I'm such a, a nice dude, um, I'm going to distract the proprietor while you two uh, do your investigation, maybe make your way into that back room. Sound good? But what, the, what if she is sleeping? Yeah, you don't see the proprietor in here right now. You know that normally she sits at this uh, desk at the front, this Azamar usually sits at the desk at the front, but she is not there right now. Hello, I want to buy some socks. All right, so that (laughs) is the first hit on the action clock. Oh, no. So I have got an action clock going, and the action clock goes from one to six. And there are six chances, or you have six strikes, I should say. And when we hit six, the proprietor will wake up and be alert. All right, right now, you are on one. So that was the first noise that you have made. <laughs> and you can you can just keep shouting if you want, and I'll just go two, three, four, just... five, six, and that's fine. I'm just telling you that there's this mechanic we're using, and when it gets up to six, you somehow know that she will wake up. Gaston climbs up Gordy and covers his mouth. <laughs> what, the, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, taps helps. <laughs> All right. How does the half work feel about this? Uh, not great. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I don't. I don't see anyone in here. Then uh, I guess. I guess we just do whatever. Tabs turns to uh, Gordy and kind of says, "How much um, of this work have you done before? You know, we're supposed to be quiet in here, right?" I mean, if there's a if the proprietor's here. Why not distract them so that you can go get your stuff? I've never seen them not here. Right, but they also seem pretty distracted in that they don't appear to be here. They're asleep. It's night, hopefully. I keep, I keep, as a player, I keep forgetting it's night because the map looks like it's daytime. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, no worries. Well, you know, at least we figured out that this person's nowhere to be seen. So, I mean, just, just do your thing. You go look for your thing and I'll look for mine. And I, I think we should probably do it quietly, though. Perhaps we could stealth around while we're looking for stuff. Sure. Make stealth checks if you like. Uh, seeing that he's working with somebody who's unpredictable, Gaston will cast Disguise Self to make him look like somebody else in case they get caught. All right. What are you trying to look like? Maybe like a long-haired, white-haired gnome or something. Okay. All right. That's so skinny. suddenly the halfling... Change his appearance to look like a long-haired elderly gnome. 
Whoa. Can you teach me that trick later? But of course. Welcome to the Gaston Bard School. Okay, let us... Uh... Who, who's Gaston? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That, that is who taught me how to be a bard. I see. And uh, Tabs looks at him pretty appraisingly. <laughs> oh, what a terrible stealth. <laughs> okay. 11. What? 11. All right. And oh. what does Tabs have? 13. 13. And what does Gordy have? So technically a nine, but a natural one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so none of you are terribly stealthy. Skill checks are not automatic failures on ones. Gordy steps on the cobblestone floor and some of the stones underneath were apparently loose and he slips a little bit and makes a little bit of noise, stomps hard, and the, the rocks kind of make a crumbly rock noise. And I'm going to put another point on the action clock. Gordy! What? Watch where you're stepping! <laughs> to be fair, the ground is a little bit um, poorly maintained in here. It's not my fault this place is such a dump. But you are all aware of that now, so you won't repeat that mistake. Where do you want to head? I guess maybe I'll ask you individually, or you can go as a group. I feel like we're splitting apart already. This group is... It's, it's in shambles. <laughs> well, then I'll just go with uh, th with um, uh, Tabs. Tabs, where do you want to go? Uh, I would like to carefully approach the desk. All right. Um, but not over the mat. Okay, so you go around the mat, and you approach the desk. You can see the things on it that I mentioned before. Uh, there is some gold and a bag. If you want to, you could count it and I could tell you how much there is. There's a lantern that is not lit. Are there any drawers or anything like that? Oh. No, it's really more like a table. Okay. Can I investigate the de table to see if there's anything interesting Hidden. extra sure. about it? Go ahead. Uh, is that investigation or perception? Yeah, investigation. Or... Is, investigation. If you want to figure something out, it's investigation. If you just want to look at it carefully, it's a perception check. Okay. I got a 17 on investigation. Yeah, you don't see anything hidden, like a hidden trap door or anything like that. This is just a table for running the shop. Um, now, you do, uh, I'll just go ahead and tell you, looking over this bag of coins here scattered around, you can see there are 32 gold coins and 43 silver coins in the bag. Uh, you can, The bag is sitting open if you take the moment to count it. And then there are six more gold coins on the table. The lantern is oil-based, if that matters to you. And there are two potted plants here as well. I'm going to leave the coins for now and probably start heading towards the back. Okay. Trying to be stealthy and careful All right. if I can and definitely keeping an eye out for anything that might be untoward. All right. Do you want to head toward the right stairs, the left stairs, or just hop up onto the platform? How tall was the platform again, sorry? Three feet. So it's, it's easy to get up there. Uh, yeah, okay. Hopping up onto the platform sounds good. Okay, so you head straight back toward these lecterns. Then I'm going to cut to Gordy. Gordy, what do you want to do? Um, looking around, do I see any potions out in view? Yeah. Over here at the lower left, you can see if I put your token over there, you can see over here at the lower left there's a bookshelf. Uh -huh. This bookshelf is shoved up against the wall, covered in dust. It looks like it might be kind of forgotten even. There are a couple potion bottles on it. I want to very uh, casually and nonchalantly start shoving the potions in whatever bag that I have. Okay. Uh, I know that Gaston is keen to get potions. Yeah, that's why I'm doing it nonchalantly right. and casually. Okay. So if you want to do it without him noticing, I'm going to let you either make a sleight of hand or a stealth check. And Gaston, uh, I'm going to see what your passive perception is. Or if you're watching both of them, you can roll a perception check. I got a 19 on stealth. Okay, and Gaston, do you want to see That's if you can That's higher spot? than his passive perception, so okay. he's do, got it. Okay. Uh, I, I, if you think you're watching them carefully, you could make that perception check if you want to. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, you want to make a perception check? Yeah, still lower than a stealth okay. check. So. so you've shoved some potions. They have labels on them, by the way, these potions. Uh, what, did, what did I grab? They say potion of healing, potion of superior healing, and potion of fly. Hmm. Nice. And there's also a sign here, a placard, that says, more potions may be kept in the back room. Ask about our entire selection. Good to know. <laughs> Thanks, Note. And there are a bunch of books here. If you want me to tell you the titles of books, let me know. No, Maybe books Gordy are for doesn't... nerds. 
Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay, and Gaston, what are you doing? It's true. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Pierre, what are you doing? Pierre is headed towards the back because he thinks that's where it is. That's where it was when she had to go fetch it. So, Gaston, are you walking around the carpet as well? Oh, yeah. I can't step on that carpet. Okay. So which way are you heading? Toward the right? Toward the left? I don't know. Is there? Where are the doors in the back? There's a room in the back here, and it's got a single door. And that's all you can tell from here. Hmm. Okay. Uh, all right. That's where he's just headed back there towards the door side. Towards too. the left side. Okay. So tell me which way you're going. You can follow Gordy around. You can um, head straight back and hop up on the platform. He'll head towards the stairs. He's a lot smaller than. Right. Uh, okay. All right. So taps. you're walking past this table. So this table has a human skull, a knife, a crystal ball, an open book, and a portfolio or notebook on it. As you approach, the skull begins to turn towards you on the table. <laughs> okay. Are you doing anything or you're just continuing on your way? Uh, the skull's looking at him. He'll, he'll lie down and crawl past this table. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's fine. You can do that. I'm not going to make you save or anything. Uh, you, you see the skull turning. You get on your hands and knees. And you crawl past the table, and you hear from the top of the table, Huh, I thought I saw something. Huh, oh well. <laughs> and you continue um, crawling, I guess? Yeah, until I get out of view of the skull talking okay. skull, sure. All right, so you get, I'll say you get around here. You think you're probably out of view. Okay. As you look around, you can see that there are two tables to your right, two more tables. The middle table has two enormous, ornately decorated silver plates, probably very valuable. And then there are three apparently unrelated items on the next table that you're passing. There's a large padlock with a key. There's an iron for removing wrinkles from clothing. And a pair of tan leather gloves. And then you get up to the stairs, and there's a broom leaning on the stairs there. I'm going to go back to tabs. So as the skull made some noise, I would like to have kind of turned in that direction. Um, and I I assume we're kind of all doing this at the same time, so I'm hoping that I will have noticed uh, Gordy pocket those potions potentially, or at least be uh, over if you, there by if the you, potions. If you think you're making uh, keeping an eye on them, then make a perception check, and we'll see if you okay. beat his 19 stealth roll. I absolutely did not. All right, so you didn't notice him pocketing potions, but you do see him standing over there by the shelf, and you see that the halfling, now a gnome, is going to make his way up those stairs. So there's some books on these lecterns, did you say? Yes, there's a book on three of these lecterns, and two of the lecterns have nothing on them. There's also a pile of books on the floor over here. And as you look in that direction, you can actually see there's some kind of movement on top of this pile. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I would like to stay away from that movement, I think. Okay. Um, and I'm going to, yeah, get up onto the stage again as carefully as I can and okay. start looking at these back tables which I assume I've never seen before so let's see you get back to these tables uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and read what's on this um, table right in front of you as you climb up onto the platform uh, let's see it's got some hammers and such right uh, yeah okay so this table has two wooden handled hammers four horseshoes and tongs, and there's also an anvil on the floor here as well. Mm -hmm. All right, and now that you're up there, I'm going to skip back to Gordy. Gordy, what do you want to do? Did uh, Gordy hear that skull talking? Yes, you hear the skull behind <laughs> you, and it's looking in the direction sort of southward now, and it says, oh, I thought, thought somebody had walked by here, but, you know, it, it, it's, it has said something, and it doesn't seem alarmed or alert at the moment. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Gordy is aware of that thing as potentially being something that could uh, alert someone mm -hmm. to an intruder. So is going to try to be super stealthy and is going to uh, try to basically while these other two folks are uh, doing other stuff, put that those um, silver plates and the coins that are on the table in his uh, in his backpack. Okay, so Gordy walks, uh, sort of sneaks past the skull. Do you want to crawl under the height of the table to avoid being seen by it? Yeah, yeah. That uh, yeah. what that what that gnome just did seemed pretty smart. Right. So you crawl over there. You go get these coins. 
All right, so again, you've got a whole bunch of coins, silver and gold. Do you want me to read those numbers to you again? He doesn't count them. He just pockets them. Just pockets them. All right. And then you're going to head back over this way to the silver plates. Yep, and kind of reach up over the table, grab them, and pull them (laughs) back underneath. Okay. You think that each of these plates is probably worth at least 250 gold. Not bad, not bad. All right, so now what? Uh, he's going to keep crawling on the floor uh-huh. over to where the ledge of the wooden uh, area is and then kind of peek up stealthily and try to see what's over there. Okay, so as Keeping you're over here. the other people. So as you're over here, you can see there's a movement on this pile of books over here. So I'm going to make it visible. <laughs> This pile of books is scattered haphazardly in a 10-square-foot area. As you approach, you notice movement. There is a book with metallic arms that protrude from its sides, sitting on top of the pile, thumbing through another book. It looks up at you with two opaque glass circles, then goes back to looking at the pages. Uh, a Gordy has a, a very surprised and bewildered look on his face, but since it doesn't seem to be affecting his burgling he just sneaks past it okay what's your passive perception 13 all right i want you to make a perception check then okay 13 (laughs) okay (laughs) poor gordy uh (laughs) so uh as you're sneaking past keeping an eye on this weird book this animated book you realize too late that there are, in fact, glass marbles scattered around the floor here. Someone has just made a real mess, and you slip on some of them and fall down. Even though I'm crawling? Oh, you're crawling under the table. Yeah. That's right. All yeah. right, so you slip, but you don't make a lot of noise. We'll say that. All right, so hey. you slip, but you don't make a lot of noise because you're crawling on the ground. Uh, Gordy gathers up the marbles and also puts them in his pocket because these could be useful <laughs> later. He, sure. He, he has been successfully fooled by this trick. Maybe he can fool <laughs> others. All right. And we're going to skip over to, um, I guess we'll do tabs. Okay, I'm not too interested in hammers and horseshoes and things like that. So some other things you can see around you. There's a table. Here, I'll zoom in and you can see some of these other tables around you. Uh, Okay, so it looks like there's some kind of like bellows and some rope and a basket and then some kind of tools. Uh, he he will probably go and have a quick look at the, the rope. This table has a bellows, a basket, and a hemp rope. You don't see anything remarkable about them just upon inspection. They look like they've been used. He's going to pocket the rope. Okay. I assume there's nothing I can tell extra about them, or is it worth doing a... I mean, if you wanted, if you have the ability to cast detect magic, you could use that. I do not. You could, um, if you want to do an investigation check to determine any extra information about them. Um, But yeah, just from your casual inspection, they look like mundane items. But, you know, rope's always useful. Exactly. Yeah, I'll, uh, you know what, I'll do an investigation just in case. Why not? Okay. See if I can play with it a little bit and see if anything happens. Uh, 14. 14. All right. So this rope, the only thing you really notice about it is it feels kind of slippery. Slippery. <laughs> um, okay. I'm going to pocket it anyway. Okay. Because <laughs> you know who doesn't need a slippery rope that you can right. really <laughs> slide out of and That's right. slide down. <laughs> I don't know how much time I want to really spend. I'm a little bit nervous about spending a lot of time in here, uh, looking at other stuff. Can I head towards the room? Sure. So you start heading in that direction. Again, I'd like to be careful and be looking okay. around for stuff just in case. Let's go over to Pierre. Listeners, Pierre, to remind you, is Gaston. <laughs> so Pierre... You are at the stairs. Where do you want to go? He's trying to head towards the back because he thinks that's where it is. Uh, okay. He's going to be careful. Are these like rookety wooden things here? Um, Yeah. In fact, I want both you and Theobald to make, uh, as you're walking around on these wooden surfaces, I would like you to make, uh, where is it here? Make stealth checks. Oh, I'm rolling so badly. 
16. Uh, that's an 11. 16 from Gaston, 11 from, sorry, 16 from Pierre, and 11 from Tabs. All right, so I'm afraid the floor creaks under poor Tabs loudly as he steps on a board. Gaston is, maybe because he's lighter, is quieter, but we are now at three on the action clock. So, nonetheless, Gaston, you managed to get up here, and where do you want to go? He's heading towards the back. All right, so which way are you going? Are you going around between these tables? Are you going out in the open, or which way are you going? He doesn't trust anything anymore, so yeah, over the open area in case that ducky is alive or something. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So you walk through the middle of the room here between these tables. The table to your left has some musical instruments on it. You can see there are some barrels and crates over by the western wall. As you mentioned, there is a... A basin of water, a large tub of water with a little yellow ducky floating in it. There's a mirror up against this room to the north, this only room inside here. And then there's also, you can see a couch and some chairs and a low table, basically a coffee table up to the north. There's a table to your right with some more tools on it. And you work your way into this area. And I'm going to cut back now to Gordy. Gordy, what do you want to do? You can see they're both up on the wooden platform, and you can hear that Tabs made a loud creaking sound as he was walking around. Uh, so Gordy is going to creep over to where that ledge is and get up on the ledge and try to be as quiet as he can and uh, take a look around and probably see that rum there and sneak over and kind of investigate those two big rum barrels. Okay, uh, I want you to make a stealth check as you walk across this wooden platform. Say 28. Wow. Yeah, so you make absolutely no noise. You've learned the lesson. Mm-hmm. Um, you creep over toward this rum. There are two barrels of rum by the western wall, as well as two large wooden crates. The lid on one of the crates is a jar, and you can see a cloak, some hats, and other bits of cloth in it and hanging out of it. Hmm. Uh Gordy tries to pick up one of the barrels of rum just to see if it seems like it's full. Yeah, it's a full barrel of rum. So does this seem like the kind of thing to where Gordy has a um, strength of 16? Mm -hmm. You could pick that up. Could he pick both of them up and walk out? Uh, Not at one time. You need to make separate trips. What if he drank a potion of hill giant strength and had 21 strength? Then you could do it, but you you would be very it would be very awkward. But you could carry them both, yeah. Okay. Uh, Gordy digs out his potion of hill giant strength, and he doesn't take it yet, but he puts it on one of like the outside uh, pockets of his backpack just for okay. quick, easy access. All right. Cool. Scans around and uh, looking specifically for the the proprietor of the place. Yeah, you don't you haven't seen any sign of her yet. Hmm. Uh, as as the others had, had guessed, she might be in her room asleep. Okay. Gordy is going to um, pop over by where that um, that uh, mirror is. Okay. Kind of on the edge. Or okay. maybe in the, in the corner uh, between where that do not enter rug is and where okay. that uh, candle on the wall is. Okay. He's going to blow the candle out. Oh, well, hold on. Then- Hold on. As you walk past here Uh by the mirror, all right, Uh as you walk by the mirror, there is a wooden water basin here filled with water, as I mentioned before, and a little Uh yellow wooden duck floating in it, Uh a little toy duck. And as you're creeping past the mirror here, a misty face floats into view on the mirror with its eyes looking sleepy and closed. And it says, Yes, yes, you're the chillest of them all. Now, why don't you go back to your incense? Ah, you're not eating Uh, let's see. Deception check. Uh, yeah, I'm Edith. Go back to sleep. Oh, that's a (laughs) difficult deception check. I got a a six. The face (laughs) looks confused and a little bit dumbfounded, like it doesn't know how to respond to such an obviously terrible lie and says, Help! Help! There's an intruder! I don't know, maybe, maybe, hey, can you get me out of here? Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. What do you want? This person's terrible. I hate this lady. She's stoned all the time. <laughs> how, how can I help you? Get me out of here. Just, just grab me and take me out. 
However, I am going to add a point on the action clock because okay. that mirror made a lot of noise. Hey, uh, mirror person, uh, what what do you know about this shop proprietor? She's weird, man. She's on uh, Asimar, right? Yeah, but I mean, she's got wings. It's so weird. Yeah, what's up with that? Do you know what's know. going on? I don't know what's going on. I mean, she's not supposed to have wings. I think it must be magic. Hmm. And she's just like always breathing in that incense and... Oh, it's, it's just so boring around here. She doesn't seem happy either. She just, she's always seeking affirmation from me, and I have to tell her how cool she is. <laughs> do, do you ever see her take those wings off? Oh, no, no. Hmm. Not even when she bathes. Okay, well, hey, I'm going to pick you up, and I'm going to set you over by this rum, and I'm going to make sure that uh, we take you with you whenever we leave, but uh, you got to be real quiet, okay? No, oh, no problem. Okay, cool. Thanks. All right, so you pick up the mirror, and you move it over by the rum, <laughs> and then I assume that all of you are sort of converging on this this room yeah. here. Uh-huh. We're, on, we're on action clock four. All right, so I'm going to go move tabs. Tabs, anything else you want to do on the way over to the door? I guess I could I could read to you about the table as you pass it or this table as you approach it. Yeah, I guess I would just like to do another quick check around to make sure there's nothing okay. uh, unusual or, you know, there's no obvious trapdoor looking things or sure. any, a way to get underneath this. Yeah, make a perception thing. check. Okay, that's better. That is a 21. Looking at the couch... There is a comfortable looking couch and two armchairs with a low table. A pitcher of water and two glasses sit on coasters on the edge of the table. And there's a brass pot with several sticks of incense protruding from it, sitting in the middle of the table. And they are not lit at the moment, of course. There's a table. This table holds a wooden bucket on a rope, a ball and chain, and a nest with three large eggs. Under the nest is a metal plate and... Since you rolled so high, you notice that it is emanating warmth that is detectable from several feet away. Hmm. You also notice these torches on the wall. They, they've got to be magical. They've got to be magical torches lighting the room. But you don't see anything else suspicious, and you don't see any trap doors that lead under this platform. Okay. Could I grab those incense, st- incense sticks? Sorry. Certainly. Okay. I'll pocket those. They might I... be valuable. Yeah, well, I'm... Given that the proprietor seems to be very interested in incense, I feel like I might be able to make use of those at some point, potentially. You might as well rob her of the only thing that gives her joy. That sounds like a good idea. (laughs) There you go. That's insensitive. (laughs) Brian, welcome back. I've missed that. Yeah, I've missed that. Now you're all at the door here, which is clearly labeled with this floor mat, do not enter. What do you want to do? Just to confirm, this is the room she went when I was in the store earlier. That's she, right. She did go in the back. This is the room she went in to go get the item? Correct. Okay. Uh, we're going in. Okay. So what do you want to do with this door here? Do you want to just uh, kick it open? I guess we got to investigate it for bells. Okay. Well, make somebody make an investigation check or perception check if you're just searching for what you can see. If you want to figure something out, make an investigation check. If you want to just look what you can see, make a perception check. Uh, 15 to see if any of this is uh, trapped in any kind of way. You don't see any traps. You think it might be locked. Can I check out the mat specifically? I'm very suspicious about mats and rugs Certainly. and things. Yeah. Uh, would that be perception to look or investigate uh, to feel around? Let's say a perception check. Uh, that's a 16. Yeah, the mat looks like an ordinary mat. In fact, it unlike the what you can see on the map here... It is slightly off-centered. It looks like it's been stepped on many times. Oh, feet have been wiped on it. Uh, it is. Uh, there's nothing special about it as far as you can tell. Tabs uh, wipes his feet. <laughs> All right. Your feet are now cleaner. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so the door is, is obviously locked. It looks like it's probably locked. I don't know. In the little bit of light that you have in the room, as you look between the door and the door jam, you think that there's probably a bolt that's been slid across. It could be unlocked. I mean, you could unlock it with a tool use. Is is there a keyhole to look through or to see anything extra through or anything like that? You think probably it just is locked from the other side. Okay. There doesn't seem to be a keyhole. So I guess Tabs looks at the other two and says, well, we need to get in here. So uh, 
who wants to do the honors? Guess I'll do it. It's got it. Let's do it. Is a lockpick uh, part of the regular Thieves tools, or is it a separate it thing? It is. Okay. It is. We you'd need something else for this one. You'd need like a something that goes in there and pulls the bolt back or whatever. Right. But we'll assume that you have such a tool in your kit. Okay, that's not bad. All right, so that's a twelve on the die plus proficiency, um, fifteen plus dexterity. So we get up to eighteen with all that. You jiggle the lock. You try to slide the bolt, and it doesn't move. And I'm adding a point on the action clock as you make some noise, jiggling it around. We are up to a five. But I felt like I did pretty good. We're at five already? We're at five. Oh, oh. boy. All right. Well, what do you think, Cab? Should we keep trying to open the door? Do we think it didn't open because it just wasn't very good or just because there's something stopping it from opening? Or do we? The lock know? appears to be just um, rather heavy compared to what Gaston expected when he worked with it. And uh, he made more noise than he expected and was not able to open it on his first try. You could try again or someone else could try again. I'm, I'm feeling lucky. Let, let, let me have another go. Uh, Gordy picks the candle up off the wall and holds it. And he's like, I'm helping. All right. <laughs> Roll with advantage this time. Yeah. Although you already done it once, but uh, go ahead. Roll with advantage. I mean, I can do it if you want. It's up to you. I think Tabs probably has higher decks. You can let Tabs try. Okay, so I'm rolling with advantage. Correct. I have a short fat fingers. It is. Uh, that is a 29. All right, you are able to slide the bolt across <sighs> silently. Jackson's disgusted. He hates cat people. And the door opens, and you can now see into the room. The door opens into a 15 foot by 20 foot room. There's a chest against the wall on your left, and a dresser against the wall to your right. There also appears to be a privy sitting against the wall to your right, although this room doesn't smell like a privy. And there is a hammock hanging at the far end of the room. And in this hammock is a sleeping figure under a blanket. So cute. Uh, Gordy, Gordy holds his hand up to everyone else like, silence, don't move. And then he stealths into the room to be standing over the Asimar. Okay. If you so. want to enter the room, I want you to make a stealth check. Okay. Is a 22. Oh, successful. Nice. Okay. Uh, very, very slowly, Gordy gets out his giant maul uh -huh. and lifts it over his head. Uh huh. And Gordy has a special uh, feature assassinate. Right. <laughs> you have advantage on attack rolls against any creature that hasn't taken a turn in combat yet, and any hit you score against a creature that is surprised is a critical hit. So I'm about to one shot this thing. <laughs> All right. Hopefully. So you guys you guys watch as Gordy quietly sneaks into the room, raises his maul above his head, and prepares to smash this <laughs> sleeping Azimar. Oh <laughs> Right. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I have nothing to stop him with. Plus six to hit. <laughs> I don't have any spells to do Can anything. Can I try and grapple him to stop him? Uh, if if you want to, yeah. Um, you will have to roll initiative, and the noise will almost cert well well will certainly wake her up. <laughs> All right, Gaston's going down the privy hole. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Theobald, do you want to stop him, or what do you want to do? Uh... He's raising the axe. He's about to come down. You got to decide quick. I think you're being indecisive, maybe. I am being very indecisive. So, okay, this is so, an unexpected turn. <laughs> so let's go ahead and roll initiative. Uh, I got 14. 14 for tabs. What did Pierre get? 21. And what did uh, Gordy get? Natural 20. Plus wow. 3 is 20, 23. Okay. Well, in this first round, we're going to treat it like a surprise round, and no one's going to act but Gordy. Well, it's not really a surprise for the rest of you. It's only a surprise for Edith. Okay, well, we'll do it this way. Gordy, you go first. You make your attack uh, Make your attack roll. You have advantage on this attack. Okay. This target is prone. 25. That is definitely a hit. Okay. Uh, I forget how critical hits work. The uh, Vicious Maul is 2d6 plus 3 bludgeoning. So you roll all of your dice twice. So normally you do, however much, however many dice you would normally roll, you roll them all twice instead. Okay. Double uh, the number of dice rolled. Also, your vicious maul doesn't it do something extra on a natural twenty? 
Uh, not that it says in this oh. character sheet. It says it's martial, heavy, and two-handed. So hmm. that's the only thing I know about. If it, if it does something else, uh, I need see to be here. told. When you roll a 20 with this item, the target takes an extra 2d6 bludgeoning damage. But this is you didn't roll a 20. You just... Um, you roll a 20 on your initiative. You didn't roll a 20 on your attack roll. Right, right. But it's it, right. it does count as a critical, though, um, even if it's not an Okay, so that's 4d6 plus 3, right? That's right. Okay. Uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, so that would be 11 damage plus 3 is uh, 14, 14, 14 bludgeoning. All right. Which is not that great. No. Okay. And that is the first action as this maul <laughs> comes slamming down onto the sleeping Azamar and the, the hammock just crashes to the ground, ripped from the walls, and you hear a, a groan as the Azamar is slammed to the ground. And that is now Pierre's turn. Pierre... This half-orc has smashed this the sleeping Azamar to the ground with incredible force. And you can see the Azamar is stirring. What do you want to do? Did, did that make a, uh, a nick on the action clock? <laughs> oh, yeah, the Azamar is awake. Yeah, the action clock is now over. We are now at full alertness. It was uh, at five out of six. So I think you right. got at least one point. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> I want some socks. <laughs> so I was, I was going to say that this whole situation kind of remind me of the old board game, Don't Wake Daddy. Well, I never <laughs> played that. I, I, I've never played the game and somebody walk right up to the sleeping daddy and mm. bludgeon them in the head. But all right, here we go. Would that make it, would that make it a Lizzie Borden game? <laughs> Jeez. Okay. What's Gaston doing? I think given what's happening, this is tough. This doesn't look like a storage room. There is a where, chest. Yeah. And there's a dresser. All right. Pierre's going, just going for the chest. All right. Pierre moves toward the chest. You're pretty sure it's locked. I, I turn the corner and it's locked already. I'll just go for the dresser then real quick. Then okay. That appears on. Well, I mean, you would guess it's locked. You haven't actually tried opening it. Oh, the dresser appears locked also? No, the, no, 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 no. So the chest appears locked. You're not certain, but you would guess it was locked. The dresser okay, is, is almost certainly not locked. Just swing that dresser open and see All what's All right, in there. you start looking through the dresser. The dresser contains clothing, not surprisingly. Most of it slightly moth-eaten and stained. Gross. Yeah, it's nothing great in here, at least not in your quick perusal of it. Okay. You can make a perception check if you want to see if there's anything hidden in here. But that, that will be your round to search the dresser. Okay, perception check is only 10. Not very good. Yeah, you don't really see anything remarkable in here. Uh, now we are on to tabs. What do you want to do? Uh, I would like to... Um, so, question. Yes. Uh, I would like to try and use Mage Hand uh, remotely to open this chest. All right, so you use Mage Hand as your action. You cast Mage Hand and you use it to try to open the chest. If the chest weren't locked, you could have opened it that way, but the chest is certainly locked. Is there a way I can try and unlock it in, on this turn with Mage Hand? Uh, you would need to get your tools to the Mage Hand and try to work on it that way. I think that would... Uh, you might be able to do that. You might be able to do that if... Um, yeah, I have a feature that's Mage Hand... Legend, yeah. Legend man yeah. Something. Sure. Make a make a um make a tool use check. DM's note: You may have been wondering why Ben's character Tabs, real name Theobald, was able to use two actions this round. He cast Mage Hand and then used the Mage Hand to pick a lock. Tabs is an arcane trickster, and that means the Ledger Domain class feature lets him use a bonus action to control Mage Hand. He can therefore cast Mage Hand and then use it to do something in the same round. Okay, let's see. Very cool ability. Yeah. Uh, that is a natural 20. Oh my goodness, yeah. Uh, Click. Plus 10, so 30. Yeah. The chest clicks open, and the mage hand is able to open it. But we'll get to what's inside it next round. So that's what you spent this round doing, was rapidly trying to pick this uh, lock on this chest. And you succeeded. Okay. And that means it is now uh, Edith's turn, but she is surprised this round. 
So she does nothing. And now we're back to the top of the list of initiative. We are back to Gordy. Gordy, what do you want to do? The Azamar is starting to get to her feet on the ground. Uh, does she look bloodied? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, bloodied? You mean she reduced below half her hit points? Mm -hmm. No. 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 Uh, does she look, like, kind of dazed and confused, or... Yeah, she's waking up, but she also looks irritated. Okay. (laughs) Uh... I want to, since she's on the floor now, because the, um, the the hammock's been crashed to the floor, right? Right. You can still attack with advantage because you're attacking a prone target with a melee weapon. Yeah, I'm going to hit her again. All right. Can you, use, can you use that assassinate ability again or no? She still hasn't taken a round in combat. That's she right. doesn't have to be surprised. She just has to not have fought yet. That's right. So, so yes, you can. I'm, I'm going to reassassinate her. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So a uh, a modified twenty. That is a hit. Okay. So I'm doing the forty six bludgeoning again, right? Correct. Forty six plus three. That's right. One, four, eight. That's a cool bit of ability. That should come with like a, a con save to like not die immediately or something. That's, That's how it, it used to work, sort of like that in some older editions. Yeah, it did. It's um sixteen bludgeoning this time. Sixteen. Ouch. You'd say she's still not bloodied, but she is real close. She's in bad shape. Oh, she's tough. Yeah. And that is Gordy's turn. Gordy smashes her with the maul again. She falls back as she's trying to get up off the floor. She's smashed back down again. Cries out in pain. And now it is Pierre's turn. Pierre, a.k.a. Gaston, what do you want to do? Uh, you can see tabs, that. Tabs yeah. unlock the chest? Yeah. Hey does a cool slide across the floor and opens that bad boy up. <laughs> All right. This mage hand is floating in midair with some tools. Uh, and you open the chest. Inside the chest, you see three potions and a bag. All right. But any of the potions look like the one I'm looking for? Yeah, they're actually labeled. They are labeled potion of longevity, potion of speed, potion of vitality. The bag is not labeled. All right. He's grabbing the potion of longevity. Okay, you grab the potion of longevity. Anything else you want to do? Uh, I don't know what else you could do. What, Move. What, what are my actions there? I kind of moved already and did a thing, so... Well, you can... It. Th- in 5e, you can move, do a thing, and move again. Oh, thanks, 5e. Yeah. Uh, he'll move. Okay. Out of the moving? room. But, out of the room. So he can still look in it. All right, so you move. Let's see. 5, 10, 15, 20... What's your move? We'll stop right there at the doorway. Right there at the door. Yes. All right. Well, you, I'll, you'll have to. Um, kind of... Yeah, a little after the door, so he's not stepping on Tab's feet. Right. Okay. His feet without socks. He's got big paws. And Tab's is still in the doorway. It is Tab's turn. Tab's, what are you doing? Uh, I guess I would like to use my mage hand to grab everything else in that chest. <laughs> uh, your mage hand can only carry so much. You, I mean, I guess you could spend the round moving it back and forth. How, how far can your mage hand move per round? Good question. Uh, you can move the hand up to 30 feet. Okay. So you are able to... That's just a... You know, it's a five-foot movement, basically. So you make three five-foot movements to get there and three to get back. So you can use all of your hand's movement ferrying the items back and forth toward you if you don't want to step into the room. And that means you have picked up all these items. You've picked up the two potions and this bag. Um, can I... So the potions are labeled, so I know what they are. Yeah, right, potion of speed, potion of vitality. Uh, do I? Am I able to look into the bag or look at? The sure, bag you can look in the bag. Into? Inside, you see beans. <laughs> beans. Beans. B e a n s. Beans. Okay. Little beans. And do I recognize these to be any particular kind of beans, like edible beans, or? They look like they could be edible. But there's, they look totally unremarkable. With the detect magic, you could determine if they were magical. Or if you had an identify spell, if you thought they were magical, you could figure out exactly what they are. Or they could just be some beans. <laughs> <laughs> Locked in a chest. Locked in a chest with shop. some magic potions. Um, okay. I. So I've got movement left that I could use. Certainly. I have a bonus action, potentially. I'm going to... What do I want to do? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Man, 
Mike's trolling you, Ben. What are you going to do about it? I don't know, I don't I know, know what you want to do. I and mean, you could just stand there. I could. I don't want to just stand there. That would be bad. It might not be. <laughs> it might not be a bad thing to do. <laughs> well, you never that's know. also true. I'm not a super fan of Gordy. <laughs> so, uh, and, and what he's doing right now. Um, but I'm also pretty pragmatic. So I'm wondering if I can somehow use the distraction of what Gordy's doing to um, relieve Gordy of some of the things that he has. Ah, I see. <laughs> it's like that, huh? You already used the movement of your mage hand. Yes. Um, you would have to step up to him and try to make a sleight of hand check to steal some things from him. Uh, let's do that. All right, so you step up to Gordy, and you make a sleight of hand check, which I will have opposed by Gordy's perception. A perception roll or passive perception? A uh, perception roll. Okay. Uh... So go ahead and make a sleight of hand check for uh, tabs. But he's really busy. Sh- Disadvantage. He is busy. Yeah. Disadvantage. I got a, I got a seven, so. Yeah, I, well, you really got a seven I, I got anyway. a 19. All right, oh, so nice. is there a particular thing you're looking to steal from him? Uh, I don't know that I know exactly what he's got, but I, I guess I just want to kind of grab things from his bag. I assume he's carrying a pack. He does have a pack. Um, I guess, Brian, how many things are in that pack that, that you grab that he could potentially steal? Well, there's the two silver plates. There's right. the uh, bag of coins. And uh-huh. there's all the um, there's all the potions and how all many that's, potions? I think you said there were three, two healings, and a fly, and those are all on the inside of the bag. And then there's that uh, potion of hill giant strength that I got readied in a pocket that's on the outside of the bag. Right. So there's basically six mm-hmm. things in a bag. Yes. We could roll one d six and see which one of them you get, or you could take the obvious potion that he's got sort of easily available. Yeah, I think I'll take the potion that's easily available. All right, so you grab a potion off of him. You're not sure what it is. Sounds good. Uh, and then... So, so Brian, please mark off oh. that you don't... So how much movement have I used so far? You have used uh, 10 feet of movement. Okay. I think then I am going to leave the room. All right, so you just step back out and stop? Uh, for now, yes. Okay, so that's the end of Tabs' turn. And now the Azamar gets to go. So on the Azamar's turn, uh, the Azamar stands up. And what's the first thing she should do? The first thing she's going to do is cast haste on herself. Okay. And so she casts a spell and suddenly begins moving more quickly. And she says, man, this is like not cool. You guys like robbing me not cool man sorry no I don't think you're sorry I don't think you are I don't believe it I, I'm not I, I could be wrong but I don't think you're sorry alright so until the spell ends her speed is doubled plus two bonus to AC advantage and dexterity saving throws gains an additional action on each turn that can be used to attack dash disengage hide or use an object uh, so that's her primary action. And then she is also, for her secondary action, I guess she's going to use an object. Yeah, she's going to use an object. So from under her pillow, she pulls out a wand and points it at Gordy. What are you doing? <laughs> and Gordy, a stream of bolts of force surge out of this wand and smash into you. You don't get a saving throw because these are magic missiles. Mm-hmm. Might as well use them all since you have badly hurt her. You have really badly hurt her and she's in a terrible position. So I guess she might as well just use the nu- nuclear option here. Yeah, might as well burn all the charges. Which means 94 plus 9. Holy sh- <laughs> <laughs> Wow. At first, I thought he said 94, and I'm like, well, I'm dust. <laughs> That's what I heard, yeah. 94 plus 9. That's 35 damage. Okay, uh, Gordy is bloodied. For her uh, bonus action, she casts Healing Word on herself. No, oh, wait, can- she can't do that. Dang it. Can she? She can only cast, uh, let's see. The way that works in 5e, you can cast one spell as an action that's a cantrip, and then another spell with a 
casting time of bonus action, and her main spell that she cast wasn't a cantrip, so she can't do that. She can't use healing word as a bonus action. Yeah, nice work navigating that one. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's a, that's such a fiddly little rule. They, they, they really ought to probably streamline that if they ever revise all this I'm stuff. I'm willing to let you take it back if you'd like to use healing word. <laughs> oh, no. No, I, I still couldn't. <laughs> I still couldn't use healing word if I wanted to. Oh, that's uh, right. But if there's any kind of bonus action, are there any bonus actions I can do? Nope. Nope, there's not. So that's it for her round. And now we are on to Gordy. Gordy, this little Azamar with these wings in front of you has just used all of the charges of her magic wand, uh-huh. uh, which she now drops to the floor. And it is your turn. Uh, Gordy lets out a very loud or half orc roar and goes into a frenzied rage. He is oh, seeing red. Oh no. Gordy smash. <laughs> okay. Uh, a frenzied rage means that, uh, let's see. Is she prone? Is she, no, is she, she stood like, up. Okay. And standing up does not trigger an attack of opportunity in case you're wondering. Thank goodness. I'm trying to remember what, uh, what, uh, rage does. Let's see. Uh, you gain advantage on strength checks, obviously. Plus two melee damage with strength weapons, which this is. And now I'm, I have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, slashing. And because I'm frenzied, uh, I can make a single melee attack as a bonus action Ooh. on each of my turns. Oh, dear. Um, so plus two damage, and I attack twice per turn. And uh, yeah, Ouch. so very, very mad. Uh, also, I'm going to make it a reckless attack. Oh, no. Uh, which means that uh, I have advantage on melee attack rolls uh, using strength. So I am just seeing red and swinging. Yes. Twice. Unfortunately, she would also have a tax on uh, advantage on attacks on you as well. Yeah, but I haven't thought that yes. far because I'm raging. And also, she doesn't look like she could do much with a melee attack. Yeah. Okay, so uh, hit one. Let's see, eight plus six is uh, 14. 14. So AC 14 is a miss. Okay. So that first attack misses, and then with my bonus attack, I'm going to attack right. again. Right. 18. 18 is a hit. Just barely, okay. but you did hit. Okay. 10 bludgeoning damage. Ouch. She's not looking good now. She's definitely bloodied. Pierre, what do you want to do? Pierre, using what he's heard as a accent in this new world, says, Gordy, this ain't part of the plan, Gordy! <laughs> and then uh, he'll bonus action cast healing word at a second level on the Asimar lady. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, second level 2d4 plus 4. So that's 10. He'll then cast invisibility on himself and then run over towards where that mirror was. Uh, well, invisibility is not a cantrip. Oh, that's right. Stupid rules. Alright, he'll run over and pick up the mirror. All right. You, okay, the mirror is actually over by the rum now because yeah, he's got enough movement, I think, to get there. All right. So let's see. So five, fifteen. I'm using three point five e. Oh, you're using diagonals. Right, get, then he can't get there. Oh, well, either way, let's see. Five, ten. Oops, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. I mean, he's he's close. The the mirror is right here. All right. So he's real close to the mirror this round. Are you a rogue enough to do cutting action? Can you... Yeah, doesn't that count as a bonus? So I cast the spell as a bonus. Maybe I can change that to casting it as a regular... Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. As a bonus action, you use your cutting action as a bonus action. You're right. right. Never mind. Uh, it doesn't work then. You can't do a bonus action spell as your action. So, yeah, you're right. Dang. Uh, trying to get clever there. Okay, so that's Gaston's... I mean, sorry. Pierre's turn. And that brings us to Tabs. Tabs, what do you want to do? Tabs is looking very confused. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all confused. Tabs, Tabs thought this was just a simple um, in, steal a couple of things, come out again. <laughs> and now there's this whole uh, orc, half orc assassination thing going on. Uh, this is something I think he doesn't really want to be too involved in. But then saw like Pierre shout out something pretty random and cast some magic and start healing the Asima and so he's just kind of heads on a swivel looking at the orc 
looking at Pierre, looking at the orc, looking at Pierre. <laughs> and I think the decision is to get out of here. All right, so you're just making a move to, toward the door? So I am going to... <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to move and then bonus action dash. Right. Okay. And I also have something that means once, uh, like a feline ability, which means I can double my movement. Ah, so you can turn. you could effectively get all the way to the door. So basically, I want to get to the door. As you're getting to the door, you encounter this book figure making its way up, <laughs> oh, no. making its way up toward the uh, where this fight is happening. You want to run past it, I guess. Uh, how much movement have I used so far? That was just thirty feet. 30 feet. Yeah. I would like to, instead of using my bonus action to dash then, use my bonus action to misty step. Ah, so you just skip 30 feet. Skip 30 feet towards the door, yeah. All right, so now you've got that much closer. You are really moving. All right, so suddenly the cat person, the tabaxi, just speeds toward the exit and then disappears and teleports 30 feet toward the exit. Coward. <laughs> and that brings us to Edith, uh, who is now hasted and has her action and bonus action and haste action available. So let's see, what does Edith want to do? There's some new feats in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. One of them lets you pick up some meta magic abilities, even if you're not a sorcerer. When you cast a spell that has a casting time one action, you can spend two sorcery points to change the casting time to one bonus action for this casting. So let's do this. Uh, she's going to change the casting time of Acid Arrow to a bonus action using her sorcery points. And for her other action, she's going to hit you with a firebolt. Okay. Or she's going to try to. She has to make an attack roll. Uh, does a 20 hit your AC? Not a, not a natural 20, just a 20. Yes. All right, so she hits you with a firebolt as her just cantrip regular action. And that is... Terrible, terrible, well, not terrible, I guess. 13 damage. And then she's going to try to hit you with an acid arrow. Okay. But she rolled a 12. I don't think that hits your AC. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Although, actually, she has advantage because you're attacking recklessly. But that's even worse, so never mind. She missed you with the acid arrow, which is good. Well, it acid arrow, it's, um, let's see. Plus 10 to hit it. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't tell you her attack bonus. But, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, but attack rolls against me. Is uh, acid arrow an attack roll? It's a spell, right? It's a spell. It's not a melee attack. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, so it wouldn't matter anyway. So she, she misses you with the acid arrow. And with her movement for the round, she is actually going to try to run out of the room, which is going to trigger an attack of opportunity from you. Okay. I want to uh, grab a hold of her wings as she's running away. Okay. I want to, like, uh, grapple. You want to try and grapple? Okay. Yeah. Um, make a, make an athletics check. or Yeah, and she'll try to escape with an acrobatics or athletics check. Uh, uh, and I because I'm raging, I gain advantage on strength checks, yep, right? Yep, this counts. Okay, so... I'm doing an athletics check, which is uh, a strength check. Yep. Yeah, with uh, with advantage. Right. Okay. She tries to run past you. What'd you get? She got a 15. A 21. All right. So you have grabbed her. As you grab her, you realize she is much stronger than she ought to be, based mm-hmm. on her size. Like she is ridiculously strong as she's wrestling with you. There's something weird going on here, but you are nonetheless able to grab her and she is not able to get past you all right so you have grappled her that is her turn and that brings us now to your turn gordy it's your turn you have grappled her she's not able to get past you all right uh i want to try to rip the the wings off of her oh okay make a strength check okay uh monster Ooh. Nineteen plus three, so twenty-two. You succeed. So with a horrible ripping sound, you tear these wings off of her back. And as you do this, you see that these wings weren't actually connected to her back. They were actually connected to some sort of leathery patch that was sewn into her back. And you tear this patch off of her back. And there's a... 
awful sound of tearing flesh, and the cords that were sewn into her on this leather patch are writhing around, seeking something new to which they can attach. And she falls to the floor, screaming. So I haven't used my movement yet, right? No, but there's a little bit more you might want me to read first. Okay. So (laughs) she begins, first she's screaming. Uh Uh-huh. Then she begins laughing louder and louder, and her skin becomes a grayish color. And from her torn back, two black bat-like wings emerge, as well as a long pointed tail. Her silver hair turns blood red and two horns protrude from her forehead. And the wooden floor beneath her starts to smoke and catch fire. Mm-hmm. And now the figure you see looks more like that. Okay, uh, that makes me super want to run away. <laughs> and she uh, says, I am finally free. Thank you so much, my dear, for ridding me of that curse. You're my new best friend. But as for the other two, and she smiles, revealing fangs. And that is still your movement. Uh, so I want to talk to her and I'm like, okay, so you're not mad at me? <laughs> oh no, dear, you're my new best friend. Well, that short one uh, tried to heal you, which I guess means that he was trying to help the enemy. So he's not exactly on my uh, on my good list right now. So yeah, go get him. Did you want to do anything else? I want to follow behind her like okay. I'm not running away, but am like moving closer to the door. Okay. She doesn't get to move this round because it's not her turn. It is now Pierre's turn. Pierre is well on his way to the door. What What? Um. What have I heard? So, Gaston, yeah, what, what have you heard so far? You have heard um, some weird noises coming from that room to the north. You've heard Tabs run toward the entrance and then disappear and then reappear on this pile of books and continue running. And then you also see this little animated book slowly making its way up toward the room at the uh, at the west end or, or top of the uh, of the map. Wow. Everything okay. is going kind of crazy at the moment. Yes. Uh, it, it, he doesn't hear any of the conversation in that room. Um, you can hear some conversation muffled through these walls. Um, I, there sounds like there's another voice in there now. Okay. Weird. All right, a voice cool. you don't recognize. It doesn't sound friendly. Um, Gasson will go over the mirror, grab it, and if he can, teleport out with the Cape of the Bonnie Bank out of there with the mirror. If the mirror's too big, then he's got to leave it. Uh, all right, you can do that. Uh, you can actually... What's the limit on what you can teleport with, with the uh, Cape? Uh, it's as Dimension Door. Yeah, so what's the limit for that? It's 500 feet. Um, it, it describes what you can bring creature-wise, so he could bring one small creature with him, but that depends on if this is an item he's carrying. That's up to you, I guess. If yeah. it's a creature, Josh shrugs. Bring objects as long as their weight doesn't exceed what you can carry. Let's see what a full-length mirror weighs. Weight of a full-length mirror, about 13 pounds, 12 pounds. You could carry that, right? Yeah, you could carry that. You can teleport uh, with the mirror if you want. All right, we're getting out of there. All right, so Gaston suddenly, poof, disappears. And he is gone from the room completely. Where are you aiming for, by the way? He would have, he, this was in his plan the whole time. Right. So he would have had a pre-designated spot within 500 feet of the building. Okay, so you have some, that's some target in mind. So Gaston is out. He is gone. Uh, and now it is Tabs' turn. Tabs, what do you want to do? Continue toward the exit? So Tabs was kind of aware of Pierre behind him and now isn't um, and seems mildly impressed. Might he have heard some of the ruckus going on back there? Yeah, like, you can hear the fighting the continues and then it kind of stopped. Like something else is going on, but you're not sure what it is. You're far enough away. It's dark enough over yeah. there behind a wooden wall. You're not exactly sure what's going on. Uh, okay, he's going to try and run out the door. All right. Really doesn't want to be hanging around. Um, if he can't get out with his movement, he'll use this feline ability instead to double his speed to get out with just his normal You can movement. actually get out. With your normal um, With your normal move, you just take the dash action, you can move 60 feet, and then your bonus action, move another 30. You're out. 
Yeah, I don't want to use my bonus action yet. Oh, okay. So if you don't want to use the bonus action, then you're just out. You're just inside the door. So was that the full 60 feet that I could move because of this feline ability? Uh, no, if you use your feline ability to double your movement, is that what it was? Mm-hmm. Then you're yeah. you're long gone. You move 120 feet this round if you want. So so I don't. I just want to use my 30 foot movement and then double that to go 60 feet. So that puts you right here because, at the door. Because I want to um, cast invisibility ah. and then use my bonus action to hide, basically. Oh, I see. You're using your feline ability to move 60 feet instead of 30 feet. You're using your action to cast invisibility, using your bonus action to hide. Okay, got it. No? I was going to say, I don't know if that is the best thing to do. It might just be better to get out of the door. <laughs> well, being invisible by the door is, is and hiding is pretty darn good. But if you wanted to be out the door, you could be out the door if you use your full movement. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do that. I'm just going to try and get as far away as possible. Okay. So, so in that case... Move action, bonus action, dash, feline ability, 120 feet. Yeah, you're, you're gone. Bye-bye shop. Yeah, you're way outside. And that brings us back to uh, Edith. I'm sorry, you don't know her name. That brings us back to this uh, weird devilish creature. The, the mirror did say her name. Oh, that's true. The mirror yeah. did say her name. That brings us back to Edith here. So Edith steps outside and sees that there's in fact no one left and then she looks at Gordak here, Gordy and she says, well, it looks like it's just us, we'll have to play together ourselves and I would like you to make a wisdom saving throw okay ooh that's a two you are charmed for a day okay, let's play sounds like fun (laughs) And she walks up to you and says, Dear, I appreciate all the things you're going to do for me. And she gives you a big old kiss. <laughs> cool. Just, all right. And that's where we're going to stop. How did Josh's mustache get so awesome? In the, I know. In the meantime? I know. It looks a lot better in Zoom than in real life. It, you've gone full uh, Burt. Shoot, what's the name of the guy? Burt Reynolds? Burt Reynolds, yeah. A graduate of Leon High School. R.I.P. Yeah. <laughs> and Florida State, right? Oh, I don't know about that. He Maybe. did, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. He's a football dude. Oh, Who's the singer for the Doors? Anyone remember his name? Uh, John Moore or Jim Morrison? The Lizard yeah, King. Jim Morrison. Jim Morrison also went to FSU for a year or two, and then discovered LSD. Doing so much LSD, <laughs> ended up on the wrong side of the continent. So <laughs> there's no reason to stick with a, a flubbed line, so to speak. Just start over. There's no harm in it. It's awesome. Editing is so easy. Great, and that means I get to re-roll everything, right? Uh, sadly, <laughs> job, no. Yes. That's a one. Good, Scratch that. Good a try. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I meant to say it's a 20. Yeah, that's uh, right. Uh, no, okay. sadly not. recording, I, has anyone even tried it? Uh, no one has tried that. Oh, welcome to the show, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's uh, Brian. Brian, uh, mm. I'm sorry. I had the characters mixed up. I yes. was going to say, I was a bit nope, 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 for nope. a second. Yep. No, nope. <laughs> yeah. sorry, Ben. My character's sorry. just changed considerably. No, nope, no, 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 no. It's just no, part I'm of sorry. the map flip-flopping difficulty. Now you got to switch characters. <laughs> yep. It's a Freaky Friday story. type ben. situation. Yep. Doing okay. Pretty good. I'm glad Ben's here to, cl- to class up the podcast. <laughs> Not sure about that. Not sure about that. <laughs> it's very kind, though. Uh, sorry, I just need to cough two seconds. Yes, of course. <clears throat> Oh, I've been wanting to do that for a while. That's what we're talking about. See, classing the, class the show up. Yeah. So we usually just <laughs> hack away right into the <laughs> mic. <laughs> right into the mic. It's perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. So are you using just like templates for those? Like um, This is Dungeon um, Painter Studio. Okay. I just created all this using Dungeon Painter Studio. It's nice. a, an app you can buy on Steam. You can probably buy it somewhere else as well. Uh, it's, it's pretty easy to use. They just released a brand new version. And... Uh, I, I really ought to try it, but 
they say if you're going uh, to to download the new version, you need to copy all your folders of existing artwork and all sorts of stuff that it, that works with it and then install it and then copy them back over and I'm just kind of too lazy to do it. So I'm going to stick with the old version, which works really well, as you can see. Although yeah, it you're right, Josh, that I really – I ought to have found some way to make it look more like nighttime. But uh, I, I just didn't think about that until it was too late. I have late. no complaints. That was Brian. Brian oh, I'm sorry. Brian, wine, you're baby. right. I'm sorry. Brian, you're right. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I have should. the memory of a goldfish. You even mentioned that it was nighttime, so. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I actually should have made it look like nighttime. nighttime. These stones look like it's bright as day. So it's, it's – um, it does shadows automatically. You can see a lot of these objects are casting shadows. Yeah, that's but, nice. But it didn't. It didn't. It, there's no way to set it for. Uh, maybe there is, but I don't have it set for a, like a nighttime uh, kind of lighting. I, mm. I, I should figure that out. It's still very cool. Yeah, super it's, cool. It's pretty yeah, easy really to use. Good. Poor wow. Gordy. That didn't go the way I expected at all. <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> I, I got the wings and I got a girlfriend. <laughs> so I guess I think yeah. I, I guess think he, he won. I guess he wins. Yeah. yeah. That's the end. Gaston got his potion of longevity so that he can engage in some questionable behavior with a uh, fellow group member, of a fellow party member. Is that the purpose of it? Is that what it, it's for? Yeah. I've just listened to the latest episode, yeah. so I, I heard some of Gaston's uh, advances yes, or questioning. That's what it's for. Yeah. He's going to be young again, guys. You see, if I'd have known that, I might have... I might have had spent more time trying to remove it from his possession. <laughs> <laughs> no, Brian was your. Are you? Were you trying to murder this person the whole time? What was that about? I was just trying to get the wings, but the wings are attached <laughs> to the person, so it would be easier to do that if they were not dead but They're unconscious. <laughs> okay, sure. Subdual damage, okay. my friend. Brian, thank you for playing the uh, heel. <laughs> I'm glad that I got to uh, just wail on someone that was unconscious while everyone else looked on <laughs> horrified. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that yeah was cross great. that off the bucket list. <laughs> Neutral evil. <laughs> <laughs>